You are welcome to this brief introduction to chapter 16 of the book of the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament. This material is intended mainly to those who lead Bible discussion groups with adult men. Let's get into it. We shall be following the New Revised Standard Version of the Holy Bible updated in 2022. Text found between green-colored curly brackets represents variant readings from 5th century CE or earlier Greek manuscripts. This chapter introduces the second missionary journey of the Apostle Paul and his co-workers. The structure of the book seems to present seven main sections. First, Jesus promised power for witness to the nations. Secondly, his apostles began to witness in Jerusalem and Judea. Thirdly, other believers witnessed in Judea and Samaria. The apostles then began to witness to Gentiles, that is, non-Jews. Fifthly, a council held at Jerusalem affirmed the conversion of Gentiles without their being first converted to Judaism. In section 6, the Apostle Paul begins preaching the gospel on the Greek mainland, and in part 7, he will do so amongst the Romans. Today's lesson begins the transition into section 6. In your Bible study group, have someone read aloud verses 1 through 3. You may have to explain that the term believer in the original text is literally a disciple. In this case, the disciple or follower of Jesus is a Christian Jewess. This incident took place shortly after the council in Jerusalem had defended the right of Gentiles' disciples not to be circumcised. The term brothers or brothers and sisters refers to Christians, not to someone's natural siblings. Read aloud verses 4 and 5. Although Paul had written his epistle to the Galatians, explaining that faith in Messiah Jesus was enough to be saved without being circumcised, some churches found that the decision taken by the Council of Apostles and Elders more convincing than Paul's epistle. We read that the churches were strengthened in faith and increased in numbers daily. The grammar of this passage suggests it was the number of churches that was increasing, consisting mostly of gatherings in homes, which to this day remain the best environment for making new believers and disciples. Paul often began his work in a city by first seeking willing hearers in local Jewish synagogues. Read verses 14 and 15. Explain that purple cloth was an expensive material, indicating that Lydia was a woman of means. She was also mistress of her own house. God opened her heart, that is, he caused her to become receptive to the message of the gospel. God, however, does not cause anyone to sin or to disbelieve. Lydia and her household got baptized. Apparently, the apostles used to tell the good news to entire households, preferring to baptize several new believers together. Read verses 16 and 17. Explain what it means by divination. The Greek term literally reads, a python spirit. For the pagans believed that a serpent guarded the Delphic oracle, which was located about 270 kilometers to the south. So the term came to be used of any spirit supposed to empower fortune tellers who might speak in a strange voice. The young woman was shouting, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. Both pagans and Jews used the term Most High God for the Creator. Although the Greek phrase way of salvation does not have the article the before it, it still seems to mean the way of salvation. Read verse 18 aloud. 
Apparently, they had been going to the place of prayer for many days, and quite often the young woman would follow them shouting the same words. Since she was a slave, the girl's owners may have been earning money from passers-by who were attracted to the apostle's message. This annoyed the apostle Paul, who eventually discerned that the girl was speaking by a real evil spirit, nor did he need any publicity from the devil. So he cast out the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus had delegated authority to his apostles to heal every kind of disease and to cast out evil spirits. This act demonstrated that Paul had similar power to that of the apostle Peter. To this day, Christians pray to God in Jesus' name. Read verses 19 through 21. Explain that the marketplace, the Greek agora, was the center of public life and events, and not merely a place of trade. Magistrates were the two highest elected city officials in a Roman colony charged with administering civil justice. By saying that Romans were not allowed to follow foreign customs, they perhaps alluded to the fact that Jews were known not to bow to images of the emperor, which was required of most Romans. Read aloud verses 22 through 24. Then verses 25 through 28. The phrase praying and singing is an unusual construction in Greek, literally praying and hymned. Both, however, have a continual action tense. Eugene Nitus suggests we translate this phrase, they were singing psalms as prayers to God. You might want to compare Peter's experience, which is recounted in the Acts chapter 12, when he was delivered by angels from a prison. Read. Have someone read aloud verses 29 through 34. From this, it would be helpful for many Christians to point out five basic principles of evangelism, that is, of sharing the good news about Jesus with others. First, be ready to answer all who ask you about the hope that you have. Secondly, promise eternal salvation to all who will put their faith in Jesus Christ. Thirdly, speak to entire households or circles of friends if possible. Fourthly, baptize new believers without needless delay. They do not first need to follow a long course in doctrine. Fifthly, expect God to confirm their new faith with joy. Read aloud verses 35 through 37. Paul objected that they had been beaten even though they had never been condemned by a legal court. Wikipedia notes that, Following the early 2nd century P.C. Porcian laws, a Roman citizen could not be tortured or whipped and could commute sentences of death to voluntary exile unless he was found guilty of treason. None of this was true of the apostles, who happened to be Roman citizens. <clears throat> Read verses 35 through 39. And then verse 40. After leaving the prison, they went to Lydia's home, and when they had seen and encouraged the brothers and sisters there, they departed. Your assignment for the coming week is to read through Paul's epistle to the Philippians in two or more translations. May the Spirit of God himself grant you understanding and great joy in believing the Holy Scriptures and in our Lord Jesus Christ.